Good morning, CHASM listeners. This is Kyle Wyman, Operations Manager with the Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District, with your weekly conservation report for Saturday, November 13th. Well, it sure seems like our extended fall has finally come to an end with our first snowfalls here. I suppose we were due, and now we can eagerly await ice fishing, cross-country skiing, and snowshoeing. While the leaves were turning red and yellow this fall, I am sure that many of you have noticed more green on farm fields across the country. Acreage of cover crops across Stearns County has seen a noticeable increase this year. Depending on the species mix planted, these fields will recycle nutrients for use next year, hold on to soil to prevent erosion from wind, rain, and snowmelt, and improve water infiltration. Watch for many of them to green up again in the spring. Properly planned and implemented, these cover crops are conservation at their best, improving soil health for the farmer while protecting our water quality. Win-win! Looking ahead, the deadline for the 2022 applications for the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, or EQIP, is coming up on Friday, November 19th. This is an opportunity to receive financial assistance to implement conservation practices, ranging from those cover crops to larger manure management systems. Whether you've worked with us in the past and have a plan in place, or have never participated in a conservation program, give us a call at 320-251-7800, extension 3, and talk to one of our planners about what would work for you. The Soil Management Summit, December 14th and 15th, is a great opportunity for farmers to learn directly from researchers, farmers, and ag advisors on how to cultivate soil productivity and health. You'll hear from long-time no-till, reduced tillage, and cover crop farmers as they share their own experiences so you can be spared the same hard-learned lessons. The conference will take place in Mankato or in a limited virtual format. Contact the SWCD office, 320-251-7800, extension 3, for a $100 scholarship to offset your registration costs. This week, you may have heard some news about the Minnesota Impaired Waters List. This is an ongoing effort to identify lakes and rivers across the state that do not meet water quality standards for their highest beneficial use. These impairments can be due to too much nutrient loading from phosphorus and nitrogen, excess E. coli bacteria levels, or large amounts of sediment from erosion. These conditions limit our ability to recreate on the lakes due to high levels of algae and can reduce fish populations. In this week's announcement, over 300 new impairments were noted by the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Unfortunately, 24 of those are in Stearns County, and that includes a sulfate impairment limiting wild rice production on Goodner's Lake, excess E. coli in small streams near Mill Creek, and inadequate fish populations in several creeks and rivers. The good news is that thanks to the efforts of farmers and landowners, overall water quality in Stearns County has been improving over time. We're doing a better job of measuring more water bodies, so we have a better view of what's actually happening at a finer scale than we had in the past. We can see that all news is not bad when we look at that rapid increase in cover crops or the enrollment in the Minnesota Ag Water Quality Certification Program. We can see the needle moving in real time, and it is exciting. These new impairment listings will help us to prioritize our efforts and financial assistance to areas where they can do the most good, while still providing conservation assistance across the whole county. One of the particular exciting developments is the removal of St. Cloud's Lake George from the impaired waters list. In 2019, the Stearns County SWCD and the City of St. Cloud worked together to secure funding from the Legacy Amendment Clean Water Fund to offset 80% of the $765,000 cost of a stormwater treatment system that eliminates sediment and nutrients from the urban runoff entering the lake. As a result, we were able to keep 11.8 tons of sediment and 30 pounds of phosphorus out of the lake each year. The delisting makes official what we had hoped for when we started the project. Well-designed conservation practices can make a huge, positive difference to our water quality. We hope to see you at next year's Summertime by George events to check out the cleaner, clearer water and celebrate the delisting. We also hope that this is just the most recent of many future impairments uh, delisting as we work cooperatively with landowners and residents, cities and watershed districts, to continue to improve water quality across the county. We're focused on bringing more state and federal dollars into our area to implement these voluntary conservation efforts and support farmers and others with the technical expertise needed to make it happen. As a final reminder, if you are applying manure to your fields yet this fall, check out the Minnesota Department of Agriculture's Runoff Risk Advisory Forecast Map. There is an interactive map available on their website 
or you can give us a call and we can get you the information or show you how to access it. Again, that's 320-251-7800, extension 3. If you haven't yet, be sure to follow Stearns County SWCD on Facebook or check out our website at stearnscountyswcd.net to subscribe to our newsletters and stay up to date with conservation news. This has been Kyle Wyman with the Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District with your weekly conservation report.